Hello, today we have a task bicycle on incline roads. The cyclist has a mass 85 kg and the bike has a mass 15 kg. The radius of the wheel is 36 cm and the lever arm of the pedal is 17 cm. And the question is can the cyclist run on the hill with 15% inclination? We also consider that the bicycle has two gears with the 1.5 and 2 gear ratios. In order to solve this problem, we use the following model, with the forces and torques as on the picture. The first solution method is in the static condition. At the beginning we find the torque on the rear wheel, and then we find the stiction force between the wheel and the road. Then we define the system coordinates on the picture, and write the projection of all the forces in x direction. We can now substitute the stiction force to the equation, and therefore we can get the equation for the static equilibrium. If you now consider the masses of the cyclist and the bike, we can obtain the following solution of our problem. This means that on the first gear, the cyclist will be able to hold the bike on the 27.8 percent slope, and for the second gear, this is a 20.5 percent slope, which is higher than 15 percent slope in the boundaries. Interesting that if we consider that the mass of the cyclist is much higher than the mass of the bike, that we can obtain the following equation for the static equilibrium, where we see that this condition does not depend on the mass of the cyclist. But of course this is only valid for the static condition, and it does not consider any dynamic effects during driving the bike. Therefore the next solution would be with consideration of the dynamic motion of the cyclist. As a first step we consider the following, since the cyclist does not spin together with the pedal during driving the bike, it would be right consideration that the center mass of the cyclist and the bike does not change its relative positions in regards to each other. Let us now have a look on the dynamic model of this problem. The major difference comparing to the static model that the torque on the rear wheel is now a function of the angular position of the pedal. Therefore, the stiction force will now look differently. Then we define the coordinate system and write the dynamic equation according to the second Newton's law. Force F appears acting on the bike seat, which will accelerate the cyclist straight forward the hill. Therefore, it will be equal the mass of the cyclist times the linear acceleration of the cyclist. Then further with consideration of the stiction force and also with consideration of the relation between the line acceleration and the angular acceleration of the pedal, we obtain the following equation for the dynamic motion of the cyclist and bike. The absolute value of the cosine needs to be considered in this equation. This equation cannot be solved mathematically, therefore we use the numerical methods to see the solution. And this is what we have for the bike driving over the road with the grade of 15% slope. We have three different types of graph, one is the speed over the time, then distance over the time, and then velocity over the distance. Here we can see that on the first gear, with the speed ratio 1.5, the cyclist can successfully run over the hill, his speed is continuously increasing, but the bike is slowing down on the second gear, and in the end will not be able to run the hill. We see otherwise in this solution that the bike speed on the first gear is continuously increasing, which is of course must not be the case in the real condition. If you now have a look on the power which can generate the cyclist, we can also see the permanent increase of its power on the first gear, which is of course does not match the reality. Therefore the next step would be to consider different resistances to the cyclist to make the running condition uh, more close to the reality. If you have no resistance and power limit, then the cyclist can run over the hill on the first gear and cannot run on the second gear. Let us now check what we have if the cyclist run on the level road. Then we have the following graphs for the speed and distance, and we see that the cyclist velocity is continuously increasing until the 70 kph in 10 seconds, which is of course not realistic. The same situation happens with the power which can generate the cyclist. And then we go to the next method to solve this problem. This is the third method with consideration of the resistances and the power limit. 
Now we include the following boundaries. Coefficient of the rolling resistance, wheel moment of inertia, and we will set the limit of the maximum rotational speed of the pedals that can generate the size list. With consideration of these additional boundaries, we have the following equation of the motion. Here Fp is the force acting on the pedal is delimited by the maximum rotational speed of the pedals. And the maximum rotational speed of the pedals omega m is defined by the maximum velocity of the bike on the certain gear. We will use the following values for all the parameters. We have here additionally the wheels moments of inertia, we have the coefficient of rolling resistance, and we also consider that the cyclist can run with the velocity of 20 kph on the second gear. And this is our final equation for the motion. We should also consider that friction force is a function on the velocity, and it can change its direction depending on the velocity direction. But of course, if the cyclist drives only forward, this can be ignored. And let us now have a look on the solution. We start with the level rod, and now on the level rod, we see that velocity of the bike is limited. We have 15 kph for the first gear and 20 kph for the second gear. It is a little bit less than 20 in 15 due to the rolling resistance. We have also now the power limit of the cyclist. From this graph we can see that the peak power corresponds to the acceleration and then power drops since the cyclist reach some certain speed. And this now matches to the real driving conditions. And we drive further on 10% hill. Let us have a look what happens here. We consider the initial speed of the cyclist 2 kph and we can see that cyclists can run on the both in first and second gear of the hill. The oscillations on the graph corresponds to the spinning of the pedals. So we can see he will ride on the first gear normally, but at the second gear he will very hard to ride at the beginning of his motion, but then finally he will be able to run further. We can see also on the power graph that Cyclist will run on the first gear generating his maximum power. Therefore, 10% grade is reachable for the cyclist on the first and the second gear. And we run further on 12% grade. Here we have the initial speed of the cyclist 7 kph, and the solution graphs indicate the following, that the cyclist ride on the first speed, but it won't ride on the second speed. We have also the following power graph and the following conclusion. And then we go to the 15% grade. We consider 6 km per hour initial speed and the solution says that the cyclist will not be able to ride over 15% grade. We can see that he will go 3 or 4 meters and then he will stop. His power will drop, of course it won't be negative because the cyclist will not be able to go backward, of course. But the conclusion that 15% grade is too high for the cyclist to go on the first and second gear. And we need to mention here that all these solutions are with consideration that the cyclist can push on the pedal by only his own mass, otherwise the solution will be different. And this is what we consider in the solution number 4. With consideration of additional 10% of extra force, which we can obtain by additional fit fixation on the pedals, then we have the following solution. Then we see that the cyclist can ride over the hill on the first gear. Here is the power graph. So additional 10% force is enough to ride over the hill. Let us now consider the conditions for the professional riders, who has the feet fixations on the pedal. This means that the torque on the chain wheel will have a constant lever arm. With this consideration, the torque has no dependency on the angular position of the pedals and the equation of the motion has the following form. Now, same as for the previous method, we will set up the torque limit to obtain the reasonable values for the power of the cyclist. With this consideration, we have the following equation of the motion. And here, we can now define the following constants. So our equation of the motion will be simplified as following. And this equation has now the mathematical solution. Let us now check how the solution looks like. We start with the level rod and zero initial speed. 
and we see also that on the first gear cycles can run till 15 kph and on the second gear till 20 kph. And this is the power graphs. The peak power corresponds to the acceleration of the cycles and then power comes down since the cycles reach a certain velocity. And here we consider that the force acting on the pedal is equal to the gravity force of the cyclist but has the constant lever arm due to the fixation between the feet and the pedal. And then we go further to the 15% grade. We won't give any initial speed to the cyclist and this is a solution. The cyclist can go on this hill on the first and second gear even with the zero initial speed. We have the power graph where we see that the max power corresponds to the driving on the first gear. He will also run on the second gear but not that quick as on the first. And we check now one more case where we let the cyclist run with the 15 km per hour initial speed. We can see here that cyclist velocity starts from the 15 kph and then it drops to 6 and to 5 kph depending on the gear. If you look now on the power graph, it is interesting to know that the cyclist starts its motion on the first gear with the zero power. This is because 15 km per hour is the speed limit on the first gear. This means at this speed the torque on pedals is zero and therefore the power of the cyclist is also zero. Therefore the cyclist will successfully ride over the hill with these conditions. And this is all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this video and see you next time.